Righto, Jez. Uh, thanks for sitting down uh, with me on, uh, on the eve of your 250th game. Little stat, uh, around 2% of all AFL players play 250 games. What, what does that mean to you? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Hawkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, I'm not one to really think about it too much. Uh, it's crept up on me a bit quickly. You know, throughout the season, it's more mum that's sort of forecasting forward, going, oh, you know, your 250th is Adelaide game, and then that got pushed back because of the concussion I had. But it's crept up on me a bit. It's exciting, but uh, probably more so to look back on after, after footy, yeah. I reckon. I don't really um, get caught up in it too much. That's a good way to be, and that's what I like about you, as do, do a lot of your teammates. Um, you mentioned your mum and your dad. Um, milestones are a great chance to sit back and reflect. Um, have you had the opportunity to do that and think about those that have helped you along your journey? Because you've got a lot um, you know, in your time growing up, uh, and then at the Giants and now at the Cats. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah, if, you, if you really look at it, um, you don't get there alone. I guess so over my journey it's it's always been my parents even before I got drafted traveling around the countryside to make sure that I get the opportunity to play you know the best football I can uh, you know Indy's always been awesome for me as well uh, and then you know it's your friends your coaches along the way you have so many different people that have an impact on you know the the your football life, I guess, and life in general. So very thankful. And probably that's been a, a nice a nice thing to reflect on, just the people that have impacted me the most. Yeah, well said. Uh, you grew up in Western Victoria in, in a small country town called Dartmoor uh, that you've made famous and put on the map. Um, can you tell us about your, your childhood in Dartmoor? And when did you uh, know, because you've your background to get uh, drafted is a bit unique and different uh, to most. Everyone's got their own story, but yours is certainly a bit different with um, starting to play football a little bit later. Uh, when did it, you realise that uh, AFL was a game that you wanted to pursue? Yeah, I um, well, starting with Dartmoor, like my childhood growing up, I was just someone that loved the outdoors. I was always outside and liked a lot of different sports. Golf was my first sort of real sport that I I loved and I wanted to be a golfer then it turned to cricket in summer and eventually it was football I always loved watching football I did I was a kick as a kid but never played junior footy so it was a bit later for me when I thought I might give this a crack and I didn't really know you know that there was a pathway to become an AFL you know player uh, I, I just loved the game of footy and wanted to play the best I could on any given weekend so it was um, it only really dawned on me when I sort of started playing in the TAC Cup and I was, um, you know, playing pretty well. Uh, a little bit inconsistent, but uh, behind the scenes, I guess my coaches and, and the, the, the scouts, if you like, were sort of talking to my parents and more so than me, they were just letting me play football. But looking back on it, they were pretty excited and I just wanted to go out there and try my best and have fun doing it. So I reckon around that, 16 going going on 17 was when I was like far out there might be you know an opportunity here to to get on a list I didn't know where it was going to be I got very lucky with the Giants the Suns firstly coming into the comp and there was there was a few more extra plays that they could pick up and then the Giants fell in my year and I could go up there as a 17 year old I, I got quite lucky around that sort of that stage but um yeah it, it, it happened really quickly from sort of 14 going on 15 when I first started to then bang, I'm in Sydney as a 17 year old. Yeah, it's an amazing story. And you talk about the Giants, you spent nine years there um, before you came down here to the Cats. Um, Travelling from, or, or moving from uh, a country town like Dartmoor to the suburbs of Sydney, uh, what was that experience like? And um, can you reflect back on your journey uh, a little bit at the Giants? Yeah, I, I, I did spend nine years up there and it was, uh, at the start it was a little bit difficult just because, you know, getting pulled out of a, a, a town of 300 odd people and getting launched into, you know, Sydney life, it was a, it was a bit of a um, hit at first. It was, uh, it had its challenges, but at the same time, I like to think that, you know, I adapt pretty quickly and I found ways to, um, you know, help me enjoy my time up there and 
and that was golf, that was getting out fishing, you know, I, I would quite often get in the car and get out of Sydney and, you know, you have to drive two or three hours to actually get out of the city, but once I was out of it, I, I enjoyed that and just found ways to sort of adapt and uh, I, I, after that first year or two, it got a lot easier for sure and probably playing, you know, a little bit of senior football and, and focusing on that and trying to hold my spot in the side at the time, you know, helped as well. But every single t chance I got at, at getting home, every weekend I got off, I was straight back, you know, down to, I'd actually fly into Avalon and then get someone to pick me up from Dartmoor, which is about three and a half hours away. Um, but, you know, that's just how I did it for nine years. And then, you know, coming down here, you know, changed all that, I guess. So that obviously was a big move. Um, uh, you started your career at one club and, and uh, been a, a, a player that uh, played in right the way through from their existence. Um, what, uh, take us through the decision making uh, of coming to Geelong and, and uh, I suppose, um, you know, why were the Cats so lucky to, uh, to get you uh, down here? Yeah, it was probably late in that, it was, it was a lot later than people sort of think in that uh, 2020 season when we were in the hub, the first hub uh, that I even thought about moving. It was, um, it was put forward to me, you know, through my management that those teams keen, do you want to have a chat? And I always said no, because I was that sort of person. I'm like, no, nah, I don't even want to think of it. Just don't worry about it sort of thing. And it got pushed back and back and back. And then eventually I agreed to have a chat uh, to, at the time it was, it was uh, Geelong and Collingwood only, and I always thought if I was going to move, it would probably be to Geelong because, um, you know, it sort of suits me the best, being a country sort of town, if you like. Um, you can, as you know, live out of town a little bit, but it's still so close. And, and then the family's only three, three and a half hours away, so that would make it a lot easier as well. So there's a few different things that come into my decision making, but even right up to the last minute, I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, I was sort of, you know, losing sleep over it at night, but in the end made the decision and, uh, you know, I think there's still a little bit of uncertainty in that first year because we were still in COVID. I kept injuring myself and I'm thinking, you know, the cats have given up a lot to get me here. There's a little bit of pressure building, but you know, looking back now, it, it was a great move for me and, and the family. Mate, everyone watching uh, this, I'm sure, is, uh, is over the moon that, that you made the decision, as am I. Um, your time at Geelong, uh, you mentioned uh, a few little injury hiccups in your first season. I want to take you to 2022 uh, Premiership um, season for the Geelong Football Club. Widely regarded as one of your, one of your best years in football. Um, would, you, would you agree with that? Um, and, and talk us through the year that was uh, winning your first um, premiership for the Geelong Footy Club. Yeah, looking back, it was, you know, it was easily sort of the best season in enjoyment wise. And I played pretty good football, as did the whole team. And, you know, we all stepped up when um, it was needed. But yeah, looking back, it was, so much enjoyment throughout that whole season even it was a sort of a, a a weird start to the year because um i was actually we just moved into the farm so there's a lot of different jobs to do and i was actually half renovating our house and up late at night painting walls and <laughs> making sure it was all good to go but i was quite stiff there in the back a few games but um <laughs> still managed to play pretty good football and as the year pans out you know we we go on that wonderful streak in the back half of the, the year where we didn't lose a game and took that right through finals and you know that would be a season that I'll, I'll forever you know remember and um, you know celebrate at reunions you know when are we having that first one actually we should yeah, book that in at some jolly stage. Jolly boy we'll have to get on him he's in charge of that as a captain. Yeah we'll um, yeah we'll make sure that happens but it was yeah it was an all-round awesome season. I want to take you home, uh, your beautiful uh, wife and, and daughter, Indy and Macy, uh, as well as your mum and dad and siblings. Um, how, much, how much do they mean to you, um, you know, in, in what they've given you all different things um, throughout your journey? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, Indy's, Indy's been massive, um, you know, with especially early days, but transition, that transition period coming down to here. Coming down to Geelong, um, yeah, she's always 
as you know, they're, they're always by your side and um, ride the sort of highs and lows of football. I try not to get caught up too much in, you know, when you play bad games. And um, But, you know, at times games. I can even be a bit moody myself. But, um, yeah, they, they always back you in. And then Macy, obviously, it's the best. It's every single day you sort of come home from work and she's standing up on the couch, peeping out the window with a big smile. It's the best thing in the world. So... Yeah, that's, you know, that's sort of been, that's new to me um, in the last 18 months or so. But yeah, it was sort of, she was, you know, um, Indy fell pregnant in that 2020 season as well. So looking back, it was a really big year, but it was, um, yeah, it's been pretty special to share, you know, share this with them. Absolutely. Um, and they're wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, people. Um, yeah, one of the other passions uh, is your farm. Uh, you've, you're, a, you're a golfer, you're a fisherman, uh, but you also got the farm. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what's hap happening at home? Give us a bit of insight into your new pet lamb, um, some of the other things you've got going on at the moment, because I loved that you talked about your, your renovation and your painting, because you always got... I remember you walking in and lifting weights and training with paint on your hands, on your <laughs> shoes. Uh, what's happening at home at the farm at the moment? No renovating, so that's um, that's probably a good thing. Uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of, you know, I, I had a few steers getting around. They just got a bit big, started jumping fences, breaking everything. So I got rid of them. Um, just a just a sheep farm, and when I say farmer, it's it's a it's a hobby farm. No, it's, farmer. Um, You're still farmer, a farmer. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's enjoyable because it gives me something to do away from uh, football, obviously, but I just love taking Macy outside in Indy and, and getting out, having you know fresh air around you, plenty of space to, uh, as they grow up as well. That's, that's what I had as a, as, a, um, as a child and growing up, and I absolutely loved it, whether it's you know riding motorbikes, um, horses, whatever it is, uh, it's um, it's so fun to enjoy that with your family, and I look forward to doing that. But yeah, we've just we've had I've got thirty odd lambs getting around, which is which is good. Uh, we need a bit more rain, as you know. Yeah, Paul. we do. We, we've we got do. a little bit, but we we would love a bit more. But there's always something to do, which which is what I love about it. Lovely, mate. Well, um, you join the two percent uh, club. Uh, congratulations on Game 250. I'd love to be out there with you uh, on the weekend. All the very best. Um, a big shout out to your family and, and partner. But uh, it's been a pleasure playing with you, but it's been even better getting to know you. So all the very best and uh, good luck with what's ahead, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Man. Oh, one last thing, actually. Would you uh, <laughs> do me a favour and sign my, my card while Is I've got you? Who's this for, this one, or is this yours? This is mine. This is for my collection at home. The Giants card. Oh, do I put the Giants number on it? I think I should. Up to oh. you. Yeah, 18. Chuck it on. <laughs> well done. Thank you, mate. I haven't seen one of them for a while.